Hey, there you are. Good to see you back. Well, this is part three of our 1977 Honda CB750 chopper build. Uh, it's getting late in the evening and uh, it's just so hot today. I thought we'd just hang out here this evening in the shop. This is the last and hopefully final part of this build, Road Ready Edition. And so what we're going to be doing today is sinking and tuning these carbs up and this box ready to go and enjoy a great season of riding. And I think I'm going to adjust that rear brake too. I think it's a little, I kind of felt like it was grabbing. Now, if you watch part two, it was a little sketchy. We had to rebuild the whole front end on this. And in doing that, you know, I like my things to be about, I guess, 60% exciting and about 40% dangerous. I mean, I am married. So this thing though, on the test ride was about, you know, 110% dangerous and about negative four exciting. You know, I kind of stayed puckered up the whole time I was riding it, but we fixed the front end, rebuilt it, and it did fine. And so we've, we're past the bad stuff. And so this is going to be fun. If you've ever wanted to know how to sink in uh, carburetors before, uh, this would be a good video for you. So these are inline four carbs. So the thing that I've got here is the Carb Tuner Pro 4. Now this will do four carbs. It'll do three carbs. It'll do two carbs. It'll do a single carb. So it just works off a of vacuum and dials those cards in so that they're operating in line and in the same time that way one cylinder is not running rich and hot and the other cylinder ain't running lean and you get a good balance of all of your motors you know of the whole motor and all the pistons and firing and all that good stuff so so welcome back to butler customs motorcycle shop So let's get in here. Uh, I'm going to show you some things about this. If you've got a 750 and it's not choppered out, it's more stock, uh, there's some things going to be in your way when you're trying to get the plugs out that the vacuum lines go in. So let me get your peepers in here. We'll walk around it and uh, just carb wise. I don't think I even have to take the tank off for this, the way this is set up. What I'd like to do is walk you through kind of the carb sink tool that I have talk about the goods and the bads of all of those that are out there and then I'd like to start it let it reach operating temperature which the weather today is not going to take long at all but then hook the carb tune up to it and see where they're at see how unbalanced they are they might be dead on and we don't have to do anything be a really short video for you over the weekend but let me get you in here and we'll walk around and see what we got to do to set up for the tube. So on this style of carburetors with the adjusting nut up here at the top, this plug that's closest to your intake boot is going to be for the vacuum. So we're going to remove this plug and they're on all four. So we'll remove each plug off of each carburetor and we'll insert a little nipple that you hook your lines up to and then your line will hang up here on the bars and um, then we can start the bike and operate it like that this uh screw right here i believe is for your air fuel mixture and then this just adjusts the the stop on the throttle or the slide so by the book it says to turn this all the way in then turn each one out one full turn and that's your starting line then we'll hook the vacuums up to that. Then we start adjusting up here, depending on how it's, how far off it is. And then the final adjustments would be down here on each of these. Let's just see how it does. Let's go ahead and put these in. We want to go ahead and start the bike then once we hook the tuner up. But let me show you the tuner uh, and talk about the different types of tuners. 
All right, so this is the Carb Tune Pro 4. You can get these off of uh, Amazon, eBay, um, wherever you'd like. Um, these are really, really nice. They have, I think it's mercury filled, and then it comes with the hoses. Uh, you do have to do some kind of setup. Uh, there's a throttle down air thing in here that you'll put in. You'll snip the line, put in. But it's good instructions that lead you through all that. You've got the packet of all of your different size nozzles for different bikes. I believe the one we need is in there, and it comes with good instructions. So I like these better than the cheap ones. If you see any, um, I won't name the brands, but if you see any that has like the blue liquid in it, do not get those. Just stop it. They're cheap, yes, but don't get those. I've heard cases where people have kind of cracked the throttle to try to get it up around that 2,000 RPM thing. And all that blue liquid went right down into the cylinders. Huh. Imagine that. Now, they make things better than these. That are the digital ones. And they're pretty pricey, but man, they're, they're pretty sweet too. But for me, I like the old school stuff. This is Mercury. I believe they've been using that ever since sinking became a thing. Now, I call this a tuner, but really, uh, it's a, it sinks the carbs. You actually tune the carb with your screwdriver. This actually kind of sinks them together. So all four are providing that air fuel mixture the same across all four cylinders. And you get a nicer, smoother running motor and no cylinder getting hot or one running lean, one running lit, rich. So that's what we'll be doing. Very simple setup. We will put these nipples into those holes. We will hook where this is throttled down into one of the nipples. And then the other end goes up here into one of ours. So if you wanted to run just a single carb, if you want to do two carbs, and then if you even had all four like we do, you just hook them up into there. And then it even comes, I think, with a zip tie somewhere that's a reusable zip tie with a little kind of push thing there that goes through there. And you can actually hang this on your handlebar. So pretty neat. So let's go set this up first by putting in these. And on this bike, it won't be an issue, but if you have a bike that's got this kind of stock, then you're going to have to take some things apart just to get to what we're about to take off. All right, we'll start with what I call carburetor number, number uno, number one. We'll just pull that plug out. There will be a little washer underneath. You don't want to lose that because we will be re reusing these and putting these back in after the sink. So now I'll just open this up and I will get them all out. I'll take the little plug and kind of compare and see what I need. Now these will have an O-ring in them. So let's see, I think that's the one that fits, it does. So I'll screw that in and the nipple, and they have a slit in the top of the nipple so that you can put your flat head in and, and kind of snug it down. Now you don't want it too tight. You certainly don't want to break the tip of the nipple off, but you want that O-ring to seat. Now if you're not careful, you'll swell that O-ring out. So don't go too tight on it. It'll feel like it's loose, but it's actually not. All right, let me see if I can wiggle in here and get this other one out where's a good place right there all right so we have all four of the nipples in and now all we'll do is just grab our hoses and on this brand you want to make sure that you put the hose on that's closest to where you put your uh, kind of air throttle on let's see we'll run this one so it might be revving it away from any of the linkages. Uh, I thought it would be a little bit harder getting those nipples on, but it wasn't. Everything went in there nice and well. Our uh, Canadian friend made it back home safely. So thank y'all for those that gave him well wishes in his travels. Had a good time here. 
And boy, was it hot. I bet he was miserable. But he didn't show it. Seemed like he had a good time with us. Really, really nice fella. These aren't numbered, so all you'll do is just line up the carb that you want to sink. And then line them up in order so you know which carb you're tuning on and working on. Now you might say, well, why would you, if you had a single carb, why would you want to sink it? There's nothing to sink it. To. But you got to understand, any carb with a uh, vacuum on toward the intake side, you can, you can use this tool with. Because there are certain certain settings on each carb that that is optimal operation for that bike. So for this bike, it is twenty to twenty two CM HGTV. I don't know whatever that means, but that's where we need to be. Each single carb needs to be. We're going to shoot for twenty one. And so before I do anything with the carb, let's start the bike up and see where the carbs are because we might not even need to do anything to them as far as big adjustments. Now when I go back in to edit this video, I will uh, zoom it in so you can really watch what's going on. I'll turn the fuel on. This bike hadn't been started oh, since our last video, so it's been a minute. Started up pretty good. I don't didn't even have a choke on. Let me try the choke. Okay, so as you can see there, it was way off. I think carb four was up around 34, 36. Carb three was the only one that seemed to be close. It was around 24. Carb two, I wasn't seeing anything on carb two, and it finally started coming up to about, oh gosh, about 12 maybe. And then carb one was kind of low at about, 16 18 so we do need to be doing some tuning so we're going to start with running that air fuel mixture screw all the way in until it seats carefully then one full turnout on all four of these carbs then we're going to start the bike back up see the difference that it made let the motor warm up and be good it might take a minute for that carb two to come out you know and come around so we'll let it run a little bit longer. I just wanted to see kind of what our base was on this uh, before we got, you know, into messing and dealing with stuff. Okay, so I went ahead and ran all the air fuel mixture screws in and then one full turn back out on all four. I was expecting that the number two would be maybe way off or something, but they were all about a turn and a quarter out in that ballpark so nobody's really been monkeying with those screws much i think our slides are kind of you know going to be off a little bit so now we can start the bike back up let it kind of get warm up and then i've already took that lock um the lock nut the 10 millimeter lock nut off the top of each slide and then the bottom has a seven millimeter kind of bushing nut thing so I took the 17 millimeter, held it, and then took the lock nut off with the 10 millimeter. Now I can kind of adjust these with my fingers. Uh, well, you can't even see that, can you? Yeah, there you go. So the 17 kind of goes on here to lock, to hold this, and then the 10 millimeter lock nut comes off. So I've taken them off. 
And now with those off, any adjustments we make with the bike running, I can just make with my fingers. If I go clockwise, it raises the slide up. If I go counterclockwise, it takes the slide down. All right. So I'm going to start the bike back up. We're going to see what we're reading. And um, I know the sunlight's kind of warm. I might shut this door. Maybe that's better. Okay, so I got the door shut so we can maybe see a little bit better. We had a bad glare of the sun setting on there. So this right here is uh, one, two, three, and four. So now we're ready to start it up and we can just start adjusting each carb on the slide top thing and see what it does. Carburetor 1 is almost perfect. I'm not touching that. Carburetor 2 is way low at 14. We got to bring it up to match number 1. Okay, so I don't know how much you caught of that. I had to put you up here on the stand on the lift, and I'll probably, when I edit, have to zoom in so you can see. But i tell you something. I love those mercury gauges. The mercury is so thick that it doesn't bounce around. If you, went, if you got on uh, the interwebs and got the round gauges with the little needle, you'd lose your mind trying to do this because those needles just bounce and bounce and hop. I love this. The mercury is real thick and slow. And as you move things, it just, you know, when you're turning these, they're very small turns and then you wait. Give it time to come up, balance out, settle down, see where you're at. Also, while you're adjusting each individual carb, your throttle is going. Your your idle is going to change, so you're going to have to go, constantly go over there and adjust the idle. Uh, I believe you want these at about 2,000 RPMs, but I like to adjust these and sink the carbs at a little bit lower. Um, 1,500, a thousand even wouldn't go below a thousand, but but I think I can hear better at idle. 
than I can at a higher RPM. So I don't know if that makes sense or not, but uh, I actually I, I just love this. It's been a great investment for me, and I'm glad I got an opportunity to use it to show you. So I've got everything set. You saw, hopefully, you saw the last shot of everything balanced out. Now, words of caution: if you're doing this in an enclosed space, which I've got a bay door open over there, uh, get ventilation. Also, if it's air cooled by you know, put your fan in front of it, get some airflow in it if you're worried about it overheating. This whole process took me, once the bike was running, about five minutes once the bike got up to operating temperature. So it sounds a lot better. Now, words of caution, when you have the Carb Pro hooked up or any sinking tool hooked up, don't burp the throttle. Uh, I know it's tempting to try to get it to settle down, but don't do that. Uh, it's bad on any machine you use, and if you're using the blue fluid, cheap kinds, that could suck it in. Because when you pull that throttle, it's sucking in vacuum. It's sucking in air from those nozzles. And you're defeating the purpose of why you have the nozzles hooked up in the first place. So, quick and easy, man. You know, a lot of folks say, man, car, you know, sinking, sinking carburetors is something I don't understand and really hard. But if you have a good tool like this, it's super easy. And it's kind of fun, you know, because it's a game. You'll raise carb one up and get it set right, and you're like, all right. You'll go over to carb two, set it up right, you're like, all right. You'll go over to three and four, and then when you raise three and four, one and two go up. And you're like, what? <laughs> and the idle goes up. So you got to kind of play the game with it. The longer it runs, the better it will do. And the more you just make fine adjustments, let it settle down. These are running right at, right at 22. Now, don't worry about the little bounce. The main important thing is, I think, that they're all even. So I'm going to let this cool down a little bit. I'm going to leave the tuner hooked up. And then I'm going to start it again and see how it does. It should start a lot better which that's a Honda, it doesn't have much trouble starting, but it should, it should start a little better uh, off crank, especially with it warmed up, and it should sound smoother. I noticed that when we got them kind of level, and I got the idle right and them level, I noticed that uh, it sounded smoother. And so that's what I was hoping for. I didn't realize before I hooked this up how how bad off they were you know we had four way high we had two not even on showing on the scale so they were they needed adjustment and you know that it might have been adjusted fine before we dug into the carbs but when you disassemble things and you put it back together you know you need to do the sink that makes sure that everything's set level because not all of these tabs as i'll show you in a second not all of these tabs are level you know some are up a little higher than others so, you know, you got a carb that might be getting a little bit more fuel. So that slide needs to be down a little bit more. Um, and you might have a carb that's not getting as much fuel because it's on the end or something. And that needle needs to go up a little bit more. So that's what this tuner's for. And uh, I love using it. It's kind of fun. It's challenging. But it's quick and it's effective. So what I'm going to do is start the bike back up. It's cooled off since I've been jawing. And uh, let you see how it did. Maybe give it a couple seconds to let it settle down. And then we'll get on to fixing these brakes. And then this, this thing's ready to rock and roll. It drives so good. Couldn't believe it. Could not believe it. It drives like a Cadillac. So much fun. The bars were perfect. Now, I am probably going to swap out the handlebar grips with these metal ones. I just don't think he's going to like that. Uh, they get hot out in the sun. Your hands get sweaty in the, su in the summer and st things start slipping. There's no rubber for any kind of vibration. I, they look good, but they're just not that functional. I think I might take those and swap them on the iron head and swap the iron head ones over here. Might do that uh, because these would look kind of better on the iron head. And the iron head throttle is not as hard to pull as this because the iron head is pulling one carburetor on Harleys, 
uh, this is pulling a linkage of four slides that have to come up. So as far as grip, you, you don't have a good grip on this. Let me start it up and let's see what it's going to do. All right, folks, well, that's about it on the carb tune. Now, the sinking of the carbs, that's the very last thing you do, okay? That's why we're doing it last. If you have issues with the carburetors, you'll want to rebuild them. You'll want to make sure before you do the sinking, you have good, solid intakes. There's no cracks or mess-ups in them. They're good and secure. You know, and it... It needs to be at least functional and the bike running. This is just to really finesse the fine tune and make sure the motor's smooth all across the board. So the sinking is not a fix if your bike is not running. It helps to enhance the operation of the bike. So um, when you get to this step, usually it goes as smooth as it goes. If it never ever balances out, say you have one that's just way low or one that's way high, then you've got an issue with that. We didn't have to touch any of the adjustment screws. Once we put them all the way in and turned them halfway out, it ran fine. But now remember, we didn't throttle it. So I'm going to start it back up, see how it sounds, and then let's let's give it a little let's give it a little go go juice and see how it's going to do. If it starts hiccuping and coughing and stuff out one of the pipes, um, then we know which, which carburetor that is. And then we can, you know, maybe adjust the air fuel mixture. But it sounded really good, and boy, they leveled out better than I thought they would. So let me turn the, is the fuel on? No, let me turn the fuel on. <laughs> Guys, it just ain't going to get no better than that. I don't know what else you're asking for. What else can you expect? This is a great running bike. Just looks good, sounds good, runs good, rides even better. <sighs> if he sells this, I might have to take a stab at it. Oh, by the way, before we get into the brakes, if you have some old GoPro batteries laying around that fits the Hero 11, shoot me an email. I'll buy them from you. I need to buy some more because the one I've got keeps overheating my GoPro. I like the GoPro. I can shoot in the 4K. I can move you around wherever. I like it. But boy, it doesn't last long on aftermarket batteries. And now my one good battery is dying and overheating on me. So I need to just throw it in trash, not use it anymore. So let's get into these brakes on the rear. It just felt like it was dragging. It might not be. But let's raise the back end up, see what's going on. Uh, it looks like it's kind of, it might be out of adjustment. And I might have overlooked that. Oh, and by the way, should be the next video with the iron head coming up. And Spears, our pinstriper, is going to come up and talk about his plans for the tank and kind of integrate keeping that raw metal with some really cool stuff. But, <laughs> you know, the Canadian Monty was up, and he said, hey, you going to match the front wheel with the rear wheel? Because, you know, the front wheel's, um, you know, a mag wheel. The rear wheel is spoked. And I'm like, what? what? I didn't even realize that. Did you? Sure enough. They don't even match. Let me show you. Well, tickle my toes and give me a biscuit. Look at that. Not spoke. Spoked. How did I not see that? I'm an idiot. But there it is. So, we got to do something. That doesn't, that doesn't, no. 
Now remember, the front tire was kind of close, and I said I'm going to get a narrower tire. How about we just do a spoke 21 front rim with a new tread, thinner tire. That way that would, that would match. So we'll have to do that, but we're going to strip the paint off that in an oil tank and the gas tank there in the next video. And you say, well, why have you already got the tank off? Well, Spears came up. And check this old school tank out. This little man, probably a half gallon tank, old school all the way. Never been used. Got provisions for either left or right petcock, but when we set it on a tank, it rubs on the heads, on the rocker boxes. And I don't want to raise it up. It might look too goofy, but I said, man, that tank's so pretty. It really needs to be on hardtail chopper, laid out, raked up, and that would look great. So we're saving this for a future project, me and you. But now back to the brakes. Let me raise this rear tire up here. So we can spin it a little bit. And uh, it tracked down the road well, so we fixed the issue of it being kind of wonky, but it's spinning good. Let me see when I hit that brake, if it, if it releases when I let off the brake. Maybe that's the problem. Oh, it's breaking. Ah, that's the problem. It takes it a minute to release off the brake. So I might have that a little too tight. I might need to, comes back up though. That's tight. When you let it off, it doesn't release until you spin it a couple times. So that is going to be an issue. Because it's not a solid arm, it's a cable. They put a, looks like they put a clutch cable on it. Yeah, so when I let go of the cable, it's not enough, you know, pressure to push the lever back. It just kind of gets hung. All right, let's take the lever off and just see if maybe we just adjust the lever, if that resolves the issue, because it, it's close. Whatever it needs, it's close. All right, I got that angled a whole lot better now. And I'm locking that angle, so I want to lock this down so it doesn't twist on me. And lock the front back down, and let's see what we got. This is more of a, the way it should be. Not so much this way, but more, actually kind of back a little. I thought I had, I thought I felt it dragging, and it sure was. All right, now let me lock the front down. Okay, back again. The other battery got hot. I don't know what's going on. I think I got a bad GoPro. This is actually, I misspoke. This is the GoPro 9, Hero 9. So it, it's an older one, but I got bought it brand new. But I got it because it was on sale. So I need a new GoPro. All right, now let's see how she does. Hopefully that was a fix. Oh, it's rolling a whole lot better now. All right, here's where a lot of our issues is going on. So you got this makeshift bracket with the clutch cable that comes up through this with the pinch bolt and then the lock nut on it. So our problem is there's a lot of slop here, which this spring is our brake switch. We bring it up and put it on there that probably helps with some of that slop. But now when we go to push our brake in, this that works, and we let out and it's free. But I don't like all this play right here. Now, oh, oh yeah, I like it better. Yeah, that's better. Right, let's put our spring on so it's got a little bit of tension in it to help kind of keep it pulled back free 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 brakes ah oh, there we go oh all right 
That was an issue. We got it. Now, I don't like how this is. So, this winter, remember, we're rebuilding this thing this winter. It's going to go back showroom condition. So, I want to redo this. This shouldn't be like this. And I'm not going to go back with the clutch cable. And we're probably going to do some different kind of things. To make it just a little more functional and more reliable, really. It works. It works for now. It'll get him through a riding season. Yeah. All right. So, let me now tighten down. This little lock nut here. All right. I'll try this again. Wheel is spinning. Wheel is locked. Wheel is undone. Very good. Very good. Whew. That turned in on to a big project, and it shouldn't now. But it did. Okay. So now this bike is ready uh, for the riding season, officially. And then uh, I think he's got enough tread back here to still tread on. Um. Uh, you know, he's, it's still pretty good. It's a little flat. Getting a little war there. But he's still got some life in it. Um, this is going to be a weekend rider. So no more than he's going to ride it. That'll get him through to the winter. And then we'll tear it down, break it down. And uh, it'll be good. Whoo! Honey hush. That turned out to be a little bit more than I was planning on. And it wasn't the cards. It was these clutch cable brakes. It's fine. It's fine. Nope. Not right. But it's ready to go. Now I feel good about him getting on it, going down the road, putt-putting around. He's going to love it. He's going to have fun. He's really going to be impressed with the way this rides. I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. We're trying to talk this bike up in any way. It's a Honda hardtail, but it really, maybe it's a Harley front end. It really rides good. And uh, I can't wait to get on my pan head beside him and uh, let him enjoy it and, and feel how nice it is. So thanks so much for hanging out in the shop with me today. We've got a lot of things coming up. Uh, we've got soft tails, hard tails, chopper builds from the frame up. Got to finish the iron head. Hey, listen, if you're invested in the iron head build, I still don't have a name to put on the seat or a theme. You know, I mentioned my shop logo, and then somebody said, Well, do you really want people setting their butt on your logo? And I thought, Well, I guess that's kind of weird when you put it that way. So I don't know. Thought about just putting, since it's such a simple bike, just putting be a simple man on it but i thought well that's kind of corny so i don't know i'm open open to suggestions and i've had a lot of good ones but none that's really strike the iron in my heart so thank you so much for being here today with me and tonight and tell your mama now i said hi